We're still working through our book in 1 Samuel. We're in chapter 2, and we're kind of getting toward the end of chapter 2. And as we're getting here, one of the things that has happened is dealing with Eli, the priest there at the temple where Hannah had left her baby boy Samuel. Last week we looked at Eli and the wickedness of his boys and some of the wickedness that, that was happening with the boys and how there were consequences. Well, here's one of the things that happens. Many times when something is not fully dealt with, the problem escalates. And what you and I have to understand is sometimes in life, you and I have to realize there's a problem. And there's a problem it has to be dealt with. If you have someone that's an addict of something, one of the first things they always say is the addict has to admit they have a problem. You can't go and take that addict and try to get them help and get them solutions to their problem if they're there saying, I have no problem. But when you and I get to a point in our life and we realize, hey, I have a problem. I have a sin problem. What can be done about it? The first thing that has to be done about it is we admit that we have a sin problem. And then we're willing to do whatever it takes to solve the sin problem. Well, that is about what's about to happen in this situation. A situation that wasn't handled the way it needed to be handled. 1 Samuel chapter 2, we're going to start in verse 22. Now, Eli, he is about to rebuke his sons. And it says here in verse 22, it says, Now Eli was very old, and he kept hearing all that his sons were doing to all Israel and how they had laid with women who were serving the entrance to the tent of meetings. Now one of the things here that is happening is Eli's sons continued their wickedness and they, one of the things that happened is it was immorality. And one of the things that else was happening here, there were these ladies. These ladies that were serving the temple at the gateway. They were making sure things were in order, things were taken care of. And they were doing whatever was needed to prepare people as they entered into the temple to worship God. They were trying to help the situation that when these, la these ladies were helping the people as they entered into that temple. Well, the thing that happens here is Eli's sons, they, they were part of the ministry there at this temple. But these two guys were as wicked as wicked could be. And Eli, the father, was hearing about it. Now Eli, he was the priest there. He was the one in charge. But he was old in age. And he knew his time was coming short. One of his dreams and one of his desires is that one of his boys at the time was going to step up and be a man of God. But over the years, he realized just how sinful and wicked his sons were. And he said, it's never going to happen. None of my boys will ever step up and be the men of God they need to be. And so Eli is getting word from all the area about just how wicked his boys were. And so he confronts them. He confronts the problem. And check out what happens in verse 23. It says, Now he said to them, Why do you do such a thing? For I, have, I hear of the evil dwelling dealings from all those people. Eli had heard about their evils and the rumors their evils and the rumors that had was far wide that had reached everywhere. Now here's one of the things that wasn't happening. Eli is like, boys, why are you doing this? Why are you 
acting in such a way, in such a wicked way that is sinful in the sight of God and sinful in the sight of me and in sight of the, the sin, you're being sinful in the sight of Israel, of this area. Why are you doing this? I don't know about you, but I know in my life as when I was young, when I was doing something I shouldn't be done or I was about to get in trouble, that was one of the first things that was asked of me by my parents or my grandparents. Why did you do this? Why did you do whatever it was you were doing? I knew when that question, why are you doing this, was about to follow some kind of punishment. I ain't saying, I'm just saying. Sometimes I heard a belt coming through some belt loops. Sometimes I heard a switch being broke. Sometimes we won't go there. But we just saying there was a consequences to my why was I doing such a thing. But you know what? I thank God for those punishments. Because the next time I was face to face with those choices to do those things, my backside kind of got a little tender. And I remember just how tender my backside was. I didn't want to do it again. So there was a consequence to my actions, but at this point in verse 23, there is no consequences to these actions. The only thing that was happening is the word, why are you doing this? Now in verse 24, check out what's happening. No, my sons, it is not good report that I hear the people of the Lord spreading. Eli was confronting him, and he was rebuking them, and then he was warning them. He says, the, the Lord, and, and he's talking about how there's fixing to be some consequences. And he's talking about their sinful ways here in verse 24. One of the things that should have happened at this point, after the question why, is now there's fixing to be some consequences. Here's the thing. What's going on in your life that if you were to stand before God at this very moment, he would say, why are you doing this? What is that sin? What is that act that would you and God would be face to face at this very moment? You would hear him say, why? What is it? You know what it is. God knows what it is. You can try to cover it up. You can try to sugarcoat it. You can try to justify it. You can do whatever you want to do. You can do the little dance you want to dance. Whatever music you want to listen to. But here's the thing. If you're face to face before God and he's asking you why, and then he is about to tell you there's a consequence, how would that make you feel? Eli was a well-respected man. He was a man that feared God, that loved God, and had served God his whole life. Now he's face to face with his sons and he's asking them why. And now he's telling them there's about to be a consequence to your actions. Do you realize that this story right here in 1 Samuel relates to you and me? You and I, we all have sinned. Why do we do the sins that we do? Why do we not do something about it? Because we know there is a consequence. Many times we don't believe there's a consequence because we think no one else knows about it. It's just my little hidden sin. I got hidden behind the doors. God knows. Now, check out what happens in verse 25. If someone sins against a man, God will mediate for him. But someone sins against the Lord, who can mediate for him? But they would not listen to the voice of their father. For it was the will of the Lord to put them to death. You see... There's two things, that's well, three things that's happening in this verse. The first thing is, Eli says, look, if there's a problem between man and another man, 
God can intervene there and speak to both of their hearts, and they can work the issue out. But if there's a problem between man and God, who's going to be in the middle here? Who is fixing to work this situation out? Well, here's the thing. The third thing that's happening it says, for it was the will of the Lord to put him to death. You and I have to realize we serve a loving God. He loves you. He cares for you. And he wants to restore you. He wants to forgive you. He wants to help you. But if you're not willing to admit you've got a problem, and if you're not willing to come to him and confess those sins... Here's the thing. He can't have no part of sin. And if you are living in sin, then you're part of that. And he can't have no part of that. Jesus came and died. And in 1 John chapter 2, it said he died for the sins of the world. Your sins your neighbor's sins, your mama, your daddy, your brother, your sister's sins. He died for all of them. But here's the thing about the sins. If there's no repentance, no confession about the sins in your life, then how can there be reconciliation, connection back between you and God? There can't. Are you willing to ask God Lord, I am living in sin. Lord, there are these sin issues in my heart, in my mind, in my life, in my family, in my church. Here are the sins, Lord. Forgive me, restore me, and help me to flee from them and be in step with you. But how many of you this morning, including myself, are going to say, well... That's good. That's a good thought. Okay. Well, we'll think about it. And get up these doors. Walk out those doors. Get in your car and just live the life the same as you always have. Here's the thing. If you were to stand before God tonight, you can't use the words, I didn't know. Because that verse right there just made it as plain and simple to you and me. Now you know. One of the else things that happens is Eli's rebuking them. But the sons reject his rebuke because it says they didn't listen to him. The result of the Lord's mark because they would not listen to their father was they were to see the death penalty. They were fixing to be wiped out. Question. Be real with me. I want you to be real, okay? Are you going to rebuke the correction God is speaking to your heart this morning? Are you going to rebuke and not do nothing about the sin issue that is in your life right now and try to risk the consequences of being separated from God? Here's the thing. I can't do it for you. You're the one that's going to have to stand face to face to God when he says, why? And he says, here's the consequences because of your actions. You realize, daily basis, I have to ask God to forgive me and ask God to work in my life because I don't want to have to stand before God and say, God, I never brought those sins to you. I never repented of those sins and I never asked you to restore me. Lord, Here's the thing. I want to bring them to God on a daily basis, and I want to try to be in step with God on a daily basis. The thing is, is sometimes we just stay in the mode, I'll try, and we never apply it, and we never do it. Check out what else happens in this next verse. Verse 26. Now the boy Samuel continued to grow in both statue and in favor with the Lord and also with men. You see, Eli 
made a mistake as a father. When he confronted the boys and when he knew the boys had rejected his rebuke, Eli should have said, boys, you out of here. Get, go, vominos. Leave this place. But Eli just kind of swept it under the rug. He allowed the sin to stay there. And as we continue on in the first Samuel, we're fixing to see the consequences of Eli and the boys because they allowed the sin to stay there. And I wanted to point that out to you this morning. Because as we get on into first Samuel, you're, I want you to remember that. But there's another reason I wanted to mention that to you. When you walk out the doors, when you have been confronted with an opportunity to repent with God, all you're doing, and you don't do nothing about it, all you're doing is sweeping it under the rugs like it doesn't exist. When all you're doing is piling a bunch of crap up under the rugs. And guess what happens with that? It'll start stinking after a while. We have too many Christians that claim they love God, they claim they want to serve God, but they never want to do nothing about the sins in their life. All they want to do is sweep it under the rug. And there's a big mountain hill starting to develop under the rugs of a lot of Christians. You want to know why our churches are weak? You want to know why our country has become weak? Because we have become a nation that is prideful, arrogant, and we think we have all the answers, and we think we can solve all our own problems instead of submitting and coming humbly before the Father and saying, Lord, here's the junk that's under my rug. Clean it. But here's the thing that happened in verse 26. Verse 26, it shows the situation. Because you remember in the past chapter, in the first part of this chapter, it, it talked about how Samuel was growing in the Lord and Samuel had been dedicated here to the temple. And Eli knew this. And you're seeing a young man staying away from the sin issues, staying away from all this. And it says he's growing in stature, meaning he's physically growing. He's getting taller, he's getting stronger. He's becoming a man. But then it says he's growing in favor with the Lord. And it says also with men. He's growing physically. He's growing in favor with the Lord. And then he's being liked by the people around him. You see, there's two sides here. We're dealing with some boys that are some simple young men that are deciding to live for the world. And then you have another young man that has decided to live for the Lord. And he's being shown favor by the Lord. Who are you? Which category do you find yourself in this morning? Do you find the category of the wicked sons of Eli that's living for this world and rebuking the correction that the Lord is speaking to your heart this morning? Or do you find yourself like Samuel, growing in the Lord, growing in favor of the sight of the Lord, growing in the favor of the sight of man to serve and minister to them? You see, there's no in-between areas. You're right or you're wrong. Where do you find your life this morning? There's two questions I want to ask you in closing. Are you willing to stand before the Lord face to face and say, Lord, I ask for repentance and I ask you to restore me? Second question, or are you more willing to to sweep your sins under the, the rug, walk out the doors the same way you came in, and rebuke the Lord's correction in your life. Those two questions are the two questions I ask you to deal with this morning. Only you can answer them. Let's pray. Father.